certainly AI is uh, a double-edged sword. So it would definitely help in automating things. It would help to make things uh, faster. We see two things. One is the spike in volume. Second is the increase in sophistication. So that is how it will affect the threat landscape. So there's always a challenge between having security by layering or having a vendor that you trust that can take everything for you. Um, and that's a very difficult question uh, that the CISO have to answer. So the Kubu Chom Kap, Kotonakosu, CIO World Business Hong Kap, Tony Pom UT, Colombo, Silankan, Marum and Kaspersky Cyber Security Week, Kap, Pachampi, Soman Yipsi, Kaspersky, Kotak, and even Pacham Kap, Kao Lub, Rom, Alnakao, Tua Tupung, Asia. Pacific เนี่ยมาร่วมกันมาฟังความเคลื่อนไหวเทคโนโลยีล่าสุดของระบบการรักษาความปลอดภัยนะครับปีนี้เข้ามาด้วยทีมของที่เรียกว่าโพสต์เ
definitely back to the two points I was talking about, the volume and the sophistication. Um, and the, the volume, therefore, you need to have more tools uh, deployed. But the sophistication uh, points a different set of problems. Um, say, for example, the, the attacks can come from multiple vectors. Um, and when strung together, it is more malicious. And therefore, the traditional approach of um, security by layering, by having different vendors uh, manage the different security layer, becomes a challenge because um, the communication, the understanding, the insights are not passed from one layer to another. But if the level of sophistication comes that drivers all layer, then that will leave the the CISO vulnerable. Right? So there's always a challenge between having security by layering or having a vendor that you trust that can take everything for you. Um, and that's a very difficult question uh, that the CISO has to answer. Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah. Do, how much does he trust one vendor or s only a few vendors so much uh, that he, he literally put his reputation and the company on it. To do this is still the same actually. Basically, read widely. Um, the, the level of sophistication goes up, which means he needs to be more aware. Um, and, and I can't uh, emphasize threat intel more. These days, um, that it's, it's almost impossible to learn everything. And therefore, having someone to curate this information together for you to have the early warning signals is important. So that's threat intel. Being able to feed those intelligence into an existing tool so that uh, it's relevant and it can correlate is important. Uh, and so um, the, the short answer to this is uh, combination of tools, combination of um, um, threat intelligence, uh, they can help them better in their work. Okay, that, that's, that's a very interesting question. Um, so, so you look at you look at the different roles now uh, in a modern organization. This is something which we probably didn't see um, three or five years ago. Um, and so, a single job of a CIO is now split into three ways. But actually, if you look carefully, um, because of the complexity, uh, you actually need these three roles separately, looking at the same problem from different angles, or rather helping the company um, manage their data, manage their security, manage their information from different angles. Now, we, we all know data is the new goal. But we also know that actually if we can put um, data together in a very effective way, then it will help the company. So um, this should be seen from two sides. From um, cost reduction, which is a very very typical and very uh, old traditional way of looking at the role of a CIO or even a CDO and a CISO. Um, and all, but we also need to look at the other side of the, of the coin, which is the revenue, the, the, the new business model that, that data can enable. So that makes the, the job of a CIO, CDO and CISO very interesting. So if you look at the, C, the CIO, the CIO job as you can see, it's about technology, if the infrastructure is about um, pulling all the pieces together from an information perspective. Um, but if you take one step deeper, actually, um, he actually will be able to enable an efficient infrastructure to help the business. So today, as business goes into digitalization, goes into new business model that makes use of their data, actually a CIO will play a more important role in facilitating this and even enabling uh, some of the things like new applications, right? So imagine if you have an online platform, new applications, you cannot do it without the CIO. Um, then what does the CDO do? 
The traditional way of looking at CDO is on the defensive side. Oh, I protect the data. Oh, uh, if there's anything goes wrong with the data, the CDO the first one to, exp to explain. No, no, no. Actually, if you think about it, the CDO also play a very interesting part. Now, today, if you're looking at digitization, you're looking at um, having uh, that, that to permeate all level. The CDO not only looks at the protecting the data, he's also looking at the data consistency uh, across the whole organization. So if you have a single version of true, if you have a single definition, uh, effective definition of the different fields of data, it will help. If you have a good definition of the metadata of your data, you will help to pull together, together the insights. Right? So, uh, and then you need the, data, the governance structure around it, which is actually uh, defined by the CDO. You also need the regulatory uh, piece of it, which is actually defended by the CDO. If not, there, are, there can be punitive uh, penalties. So actually, the CDO defines a lot of things within the organization, both to protect the organization, uh, but also to help the, def the, the, the organization clarify certain things so they can take the next leap. The CISO um, will is actually looking at the security part. But he needs to understand that security happens at the onset and not as after effect patching the host. Right? So, so if you then look at, and then security cuts across um, infrastructure, cuts across data, cut, cuts, cuts across application. So he will then needs to make sure that he, he can protect that security across all the different domains and attack services. Now, what it means is then these three roles is actually a very heavily integrated. Uh, they're, very, they're very heavily integrated. They need to actually complement each other. Um, the reality is because of the heavy data digitalization, um, all three, the role that was usually done by one person is now split into three. But having said that, the coordination among the three is very, very important now. Okay, um, okay, so first of all, AI is still uh, evolving. So I won't say post AI era. I will say um, in the new AI era. Okay. Because it will continue to evolve. Whether we like it, we don't like it, uh, it's going to be part of, part of our life. We just need to embrace it. Now, as a vendor, um, that there are a few ways that we, 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 we leverage on AI. Uh, first of all, within the tool itself. So I give you some statistics. Um, we collect 411,000 unique new malicious files every day. How does, it's not humanly possible to process it anymore. Therefore, there must be a set of AI rules, um, automation, uh, machine learning, to be able to process this and in a very automatic way, uh, incorporate this into the product so that it continues to protect. Uh, our customers. Right? So that's, that's one thing. Beyond that, it surfaces up and then that's when a different team will then look at it and see uh, whether they need to improve the rules. And the rules can come in the form of uh, AI rules in terms of behavior analytics and it not necessarily mean the good old signature. So um, the long and short of it is AI is incorporated into the tool even it before it reaches the end customer. Um, then the second way AI is being used is, uh, is the orchestration and understanding the different, uh, the different data interact with one another. And, and that uh, correlation and all that is then used in a form of new products that we have that integrates all the different pieces together. So I, I spoke just now about uh, the traditional way of having a layered security uh, done by different vendors. You also need to then see that even though it's done by different vendors, someone needs to have an overall view, being able to correlate and understand because the attacks are going to come not just in a single layer, but in multiple layer in a very orchestrated way then uh, you need to be intelligent enough to, to be able to detect that and prevent some of these things. And that's where 
the the tools are the the rules are being incorporated the intelligence are being incorporated on a daily basis uh, to improve it yeah so it comes in both forms actually <laughs>